Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome to the official top 500 Ash Guide. And I know many of you guys have been asking for this video for a long, long time, ever since the old console days where I pretty much only played that hero. After almost three years of one-tricking Ash, I feel like I'm pretty damn qualified to give you guys my best tips on how to climb and how to improve your overall game sense on Ash. I may as well start with a slight word about me. As I just mentioned, I have a long history from console Overwatch. I played on PS4 ever since season three, hit Grandmasters for my first time in season five, and found my love for playing Playing Ash whenever she was released in season 13. Prior to playing the cowgirl, I played Widowmaker, Hanzo, and McCree. Recently, I hit a peak SR 4588 before the PC swap and solidified myself number two in the top 500 leaderboards. I think Ash was a lot stronger on console than on PC just because the gameplay is so tremendously slow and there's a ridiculous amount of Mercy players in Grandmasters and above. You may have actually seen me for the first time on Pro Spotlight a decent while ago, showcasing my skills on controller Ash. However, since then, I switched to PC, applied my game sense that I accumulated on console, and climb my way to top 500, peaking at 4336. Basically just one tricking Ash. If you guys are also interested in a guide on how to efficiently switch from console to PC, no matter what rank you are, all you have to do is leave a like and show me you're interested in the comments. One of the major contributing factors to that switch to PC was transitioning my settings. If you guys are interested in my console settings for Ash, all you have to do is check out the link above or in the description. The first realization that I had is if I wanted to play against the best competition, including Overwatch players, Contenders players, Open Division players, and even your favorite streamers, I had to increase my overall sensitivity to match the pace of the game and eventually the players I would face up against. I realized the importance of poking out flankers and baiting out cooldowns while landing quick hip fires on smaller targets. I had to depend more on my raw mechanics rather than simply relying on aim assist. A faster sense enabled me to land quicker dynamite flicks and quickly ducking against other snipers. At the time of making this video, I'm currently sitting at 800 DPI and 5.2 cents, but of course that's subject to change. I found this to be an extremely comfortable spot where I don't have to worry about over flicking or under flicking, but ultimately through trial and error, you'll find what sensitivity you play best with. And you should also help out everybody in the comments by sharing your sensitivity. That way other viewers can try it out as well. My next tip was actually inspired by KG, one of my good friends that helped me transition to PC. He suggested running a one-to-one -one scope sensitivity ratio, which basically means you're mirroring your unscoped sensitivity, which is all personal preference. If you run 51.44 relative sense while scoped in, that'll enable the ratio, and that seems to work wonders for me. You won't lose or gain momentum between switching targets. One of the biggest changes I made since switching a PC is switching from the dot to crosshair, which you guys may have noticed already. One of the major reasons for that switch is being able to have more headshot visibility against heroes like Tracer and Widow, who are infamously known for countering Ash. I use the Scion color, which is great for contrasting most map colors, a thickness of 1, crosshair length of 8, center gap 5, 100 opacity, 30 outline opacity, 2 dot size, and 100 dot opacity. I'll put all the values in the description below if you guys want to copy paste them from there. The only other setting I can think of that might be interesting to you guys is the fact that I have my button layout for punch set to my mouse button 1, which allows me to quickly headshot punch for the solo kill. Now let's get into the aim guide. The obvious most notable difference in mechanics between players is their ability to flick versus track, and knowing when to use either depending on the situation. Learning how to flick between targets comes a lot less naturally, and it's still something that I struggle with today. You have to practice flicking from all different angles and all different distances to have the absolute most versatility during fast fights, and learning how to apply those aim techniques with other abilities like Coach Gun or with ultimates like Bob. An amazing aerial aim trainer that allows you to close or or further the distance between targets is TKBR3. I'll put the workshop link in the description below. Ultimately, one of the best practices is learning how to flick for body shots and recentering after every shot. As you continue to improve your body shot accuracy, you'll notice that the targets aren't moving nearly as fast as they were, but they are. Through experience, you're going to learn certain player behavior and patterns based on heroes, abilities, and map design. You'll learn how to better track targets without necessarily relying on flicking. And trust me when I say that'll improve your headshot accuracy as well. I would suggest more often than not, you should rely on a consistent tracking over flicking, especially in lower ranks. Once you get to the point where you start to notice your flicks getting better, you can also apply them to abilities like Dynamite. Tracking large tanks like Orisa, Winston, and Diva is as simple as following their movement and pathing to point. Whereas with DPS, it's a lot easier to track their movement based on ability, like Tracer's Blink, Recall, Widow's Grapple, Ash's Coach Gun, and more. Now I'll discuss whenever it's best to track versus flick against another DPS. In terms of tracking, you can unscope and bait out cooldowns like grapple, recall, and deflect. If a Genji is aggressively pushing you, you can track his wall climb, dash, and then hip fire to bait out his deflect. The same applies to Tracer, where you can unscope, tracker blinks, and then bait out recall before flicking. Flicking is best after the cooldown is set off, much like at the peak of Widow's grapple, at the end of Tracer's recall, or at the peak of Genji's dash. After all is said and done, one of the best practices is learning how to recenter your crosshair. That way you're ready for whatever happens 
happens next in the fight. So now let's talk about scoped versus unscoped and the intricacies between both aim styles. Some general knowledge before we get started, you can do 75 damage while aiming down sights with a 25% movement speed penalty, while you can only do 40 damage while hip firing. Lastly, Ash has a pretty massive fall off range while scoped at 30 to 50 meters and 20 to 40 meters unscoped. Some of the best ways to use hip fire includes baiting out cooldowns, putting targets in range of headshot KO after the recent patch, and close quarter dynamite detonation. Scoped is a lot better for tank bust, ranged dynamites, shield break, breaking abilities like immortality field and bongo, cleaning up kills, and longer fights, where you don't necessarily want to be spamming running out of ammo. And now's the best opportunity for us to talk about Ash's reload. A while back, Ash was nerfed from 15 to 12 bullets to work with, which isn't all that great while her reload is as bad as it is. She has a full reload time of 3.5 seconds, which basically means if you're getting caught in reload, you're probably going to lose the fight. You might just be losing a lot of ammo out of spam or just missing shots in general, but usually it has to do with applying when to use unscoped or scoped. The best time to reload is either at the end of fights, holding a corner, or while consistently moving. One of my biggest personal tips is keeping about three to four bullets left over. That way there, if ever you need to be within kill range, you are. Since most squishies actually only take three to four bullets to kill. If you do end up getting caught in reload, you can cancel it by punching, aiming, or using your dynamite. Let's get into Ash's abilities, learning how to use them, and when to use them properly. One of Ash's main source of damage, one of the most broken abilities in the entire game of Overwatch is her dynamite. Her dynamite has a cooldown of 12 seconds, has an explosion that does 20 to 50 damage on impact, the burn alone does 100 damage over 5 seconds, and has a radius of 5 meters. Just keep in mind that Ash can also burn herself, so be extra careful. What a lot of people don't tend to mention is dynamite can actually be pretty bad sometimes. While dynamite doesn't typically land kills on chokeholds, you're usually prone to feed the other team's support ultimates before yours, which most of the time is very fight defining. For example, if their BAP is spam healing a choke without you actually killing anybody, he's usually going to be able to open up the fight with an ant matrix within 20 seconds. You'll also want to be aware that you might be feeding the enemy Zarya some charge, and overall you're pretty damn vulnerable during the dynamite animation where you can't shoot or reload, and you're typically in the open. You'll only really want to use dynamite after baiting abilities like Zarya bubbles, Diva's defense matrix, and Sigma shields. The advantage to dynamite is you can actually bait abilities using dynamite like recall, deflect, on an aid, Baptiste Immortality Field, Reaper Wraith, and May Cryo, which ultimately gives your team the advantage in the short fight. Of course, that goes without saying that Dynamite is one of the best ways to build your Bob Alt, landing anywhere between 20 to 60% on your ult every single time you Dynamite, which is especially amazing because after you throw a Bob, you can continuously build ult charge while it's active. Make sure while you're throwing Dynamite, your shoulder and head peeking or using shield cover, because if you don't Dynamite out of sight line, you're probably gonna get your head popped off. One of the best things you should be keeping in mind is trying to combo Dynamite for final blows on single target. In terms of bad dynamite practices, definitely don't stand still while dynamiting. You're not going to want to feed the other team's support ultimates, so try not to spam dynamite or do your best to track their ultimates. Don't forget to combo with abilities or ultimates like Arisa Pull, Graviton Surge, or Hammond Pile Drive. Definitely don't throw your dynamite at your feet, which is going to inflict self burn. And lastly, try not to bounce dynamites off shields or walls. Here are some of my personal dynamite tips that I picked up over the years. Dynamite is designed to fall in the crosshair for immediate detonation. So if you're anywhere from short to mid range, you don't have to widely flick. I would recommend scoping for ranged dynamites and track the entire trajectory from launch. Throw your dynamite above the shield to burn more targets and the shield included, considering the team usually follows the space created by their main tank. And based on what I said earlier, make sure you're side strafing while throwing your dynamite so that you're not an easy static kill. Ash's coach gun is designed to give her mobility, movement, and to create distance between you and the enemy. As for the general pointers, coach gun is on a cooldown of 10 seconds. Each pellet does 6 damage, which is a maximum of 90 damage. And lastly, you can self knock back for a maximum of 9.4 meters. As many of you already know, coach gun is especially good for taking high ground. Coach Gun is also great for getting out of spawn and giving yourself the extra speed boost so you could take position before the other snipers. Speaking of positioning, you can also use Coach Gun to rotate around the map and take advantage of certain spots based on map design.
A more risky strategy for Coach Gun is using it to boot people off the map while holding a corner for follow-up. Here's some coach gun tactics that I use on a game to game basis to give me the edge in certain duels. One thing I've already mentioned is creating distance between you and the enemy, especially following an ability like Winston Dive, Reaper after Wraith, booping Baptiste out of his immortality field, forcing a Reddit Lucio out of range, and creating distance between you and a fully charged Symmetra. Furthermore, you can actually bait out abilities using coach gun. Because it does a maximum of 90 damage, you can actually force abilities like recall and deflect using the coach gun itself. A really great usage for coach gun is actually using it to reposition and regroup with your team. Some bad coach gun practices include vertical or horizontal knockback string fights, using coach gun during a brawl, and panicking without necessarily predicting other cooldowns and movement. For example, if you're too soon to boop a Winston off high ground, the D.Va could follow up and pressure you. Many of you guys know Bob as Ash's butler, but more than just that, he's also one of the best and most versatile ultimates in the entire game. Bob has a total health of 1200 HP, more than most tanks. He charges at 50 meters per second. He has a collision damage of 120 HP and flings the enemy into the air. Bob can contest capture points and move objectives. He lasts 10 seconds after charge or collision. Bob's priority focus or targeting is decided by whatever is closest, so that could be a shield, ability, or an enemy. You can also build ult charge while Bob is active. And something I've only really found out recently, you can actually push Bob. Lastly, Bob can also be healed by your team. The best times to use Bob is to take progress on a point, engage your team while making space and baiting cooldowns, especially strong on 2CP maps like Hanamura or Temple of Anubis. You can use Bob to contest a point for regroup, allowing your team to fight together rather than staggering into the fight. He's great for solo kills, basically you can collide and scope shot for an easy one tap. Bob is especially strong for redirecting focus and baiting cooldowns as I mentioned, like Sigma Shield, Reinhardt Shield, Winston Bubble, Zarya Bubble, Somber Hacks, and more. Off angling Bob for wider team fights is also extremely strong. You can use Bob on high ground for more sight lines, and also mobilize a target, halting their positioning. An example of that is throwing Bob at a Reinhardt for a rush composition. Some of the bad Bob practices that you guys have probably seen me do before. Definitely don't use Bob while cooldowns are available, like shields and sleep dart. Try not to throw Bob too early when your team isn't organized for the push. Don't be greedy and use Bob in impossible clutch scenarios. Try not to place Bob in boopable spots like Nepal Sanctuary. And be especially careful not to angle Bob incorrectly and shoot him off the map. He won't like that very much. Let's talk about the nitty gritty. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, Ash just really isn't all that great in this current meta. She isn't particularly strong after her recent nerfs and McCree enables meta-based competitions like Rush a little too much. Some of the great compositions for Ash include poke compositions that enable Mercies and Yada, Baptiste, and Arissa. Ash and Bob definitely benefit from those damage boosts. Double sniper compositions are always extremely reliable. Considering Widow and Ash, Hanzo Ash are fantastic because Ash can prioritize tank bus and mid range while your other DPS fights long range duels. Flankers and Hammond usually synergize quite well with Ash because just about any hero that immediately dives the enemy hit scans enables you to take braver sightlines for more value. A couple of months ago, you may have noticed that double shield enabled Ash a lot because playing Ash with both Sigma and Arissa lets you sit comfortably at mid range distance without worrying about heroes like Widowmaker finding sight lines. Double shield comp just gave you so much freedom to hit those massive dynamites. Some of the bad compositions for Ash include and are not limited to Rush, where Ash simply feeds Zarya bubbles, feeds Baptiste and Lucio game defining ultimates, and isn't particularly strong against a 225 HP McCree or a steadfast Reinhardt. That goes without saying that Mercy and Zenyatta are horrible against Rush, who are pretty key components in enabling Ash. Another terrible composition to run Ash against is Dive or Double Bubble. Double Bubble, if you didn't know, is Winston's Zarya. Diva and Zarya basically take value away from dynamite while applying pressure on your back line. Winston takes high ground much easier than you and forces you from team fights. Heroes like Tracer and Genji can easily force your Mercy out of position, make you panic, and pressure your cooldowns or your reload. In conclusion, Ash just simply isn't the best hero right now because of Rush and Double Bubble meta, so make sure to learn flex heroes that are good against your counters. I recommend trying out McCree and Torbjorn. Those are usually my best flex picks. Keep in mind that I play Ash because she helped define what our channel is today, and her kit is extremely fun and interactive. At the end of the day, the biggest takeaway from this video is just to have fun with the hero, and enjoy what she has to offer. Thank you guys so much for watching the video and big shout out to every single one of you guys who stuck it out until the end. If you want another guide where I explain exactly how I switch from console to PC so easily, make sure you guys leave a like on the video, subscribe, and let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed your stay.